At this time, we'd like to welcome our next guest, recognized as All Defense First Team 2018. Of course, he's had a couple stops since then. Rockets forward Robert Covington joining the jump. Always so good to have you back. Thanks for hopping on with us. Man, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You did something huge, huge. On Thursday, you announced a seven-figure donation to your alma mater, Tennessee State University, brand new men's and women's basketball practice facility. Uh, what inspired you to make such a significant donation? Because, um, you know, when I was here, I seen how much uh, stuff that other facilities had and, you know, the things that, you know, they had access to. So, you know, for me, for me, you know, just being able to give back and, you know, be able to do my part, like it's, it's time. And, you know, like I said, I'm here, you know, in this city, you know, a lot. I see these kids, I see what they, you know, have access to, because like I said, I've had the same access to those same things. And, you know, for me to, you know, do this uh, for my, my alma mater, is, it's a big thing because like I said, it's, it's many that have done stuff before me and, you know, now it's my time to, you know, give back and, you know, help them, you know, elevate themselves because, like you said, this this whole movement, you know, with HBCUs and, and having that, like, why can't we have the same access to the same facilities and everything that, you know, these other universities have? And they have, they're having sponsors and everyone donate to them. So, you know, for us, you know, I feel like my program, you know, where I grew up in as a man, as a player, mm -hmm. and you know, what helped more than me, like, they deserve to have that. Absolutely. I mean, it's just all kinds of opportunities you are handing down to the generations coming behind you. It is so impressive. And you are, you mentioned HBCUs. You're one of only two players in the league right now to have attended an HBCU. What does that mean to you? And what do you want to see change in the future in terms of that? Uh, for, you know, more kids to, you know, experience that, um, you know, going to HBCU was the best college experience I could ever imagine. And, mm -hmm. you know, everyone always says that, uh, like if you would have went anywhere else, like would you have been able to do something? No, I wouldn't have went nowhere else. Like <laughs> I had, the, I had the opportunity to transfer, but I didn't. I, I loved everything about where I was at. So I had already established myself in this program, you know, in OVC, and I had already put my imprint on everything. So why not finish what I started? And that's what I was always big on. So for me, you know, to be here in this moment, like you said, it's it's life changing. You know, because it's going to impact generations to come. So you know, for me to be able in this position, you know, it's not only will I have access to it as well, but, you know, I can, we can help these kids get knowledge from a lot of different people. And, you know, we can actually use this as an attraction point, you know, for kids and, you know, for some pet, from players. Like, people don't realize that Nashville is actually a really great city. And and it's, it's very uplifting. So there's so much that has changed over the past 10 years since I've been here. Absolutely. And look, we are seeing more and more prospects say they're considering outside the box thinking it's not just the major sort of big profile programs. And I think you and some of the other people who are putting the spotlight on HBCUs are definitely giving them an alternative path that can be so rewarding. In fact, it's so rewarding. You ended up in the NBA, so you've done just fine. And I want to ask about your Houston Rockets life. You just got a new coach, Stephen Silas. What is your reaction to the hire? Have you spoken to him yet? Yes, I've spoken to him. Um, he's he's a good dude, and you know he's already said that he want he wants to change the dynamic of things, and you know he has so much that he has in tune for us, and you know with the program that we have and with the the team that we have, like he can do a lot, and you know he he wanted this job to you know be able to make a change and you know have the opportunity to coach two prolific MVP caliber superstars and. You know, not too many people get that opportunity as their first head coaching job. So he's up for the challenge. And, you know, he, he's told me that, you know, he wants everyone to be as, as mentally focused and mentally locked in. And, you know, just overall, you know, continue to come in and work because, like I said, it's going to be a different transition of what his dynamic is. So, you know, he's just excited for the opportunity. Well, you mentioned those two MVP caliber players. There are ESPN reports out there from this past week that indicate Russell Westbrook, James Harden, have expressed uncertainty about the direction of the franchise, that they're not at the point, either one of them, of asking for a trade, but that that's not out of the question down the road. How do you feel when you hear that? Uh, I, I don't I don't know what they're, they're, they're... I haven't really talked too much because, like I said, I'm, you know, one of the guys that just, you know, I have to go in and do what I have to do. And, you know, those are the two focal points of the team. So with them, 
they have to, they are more engaged in that. And, you know, I understand, you know, uncertainty and how people may feel about certain things. But like you said, it's just, it's new. Like everything is, it's a whirlwind right, right about now. So everything's not going to make sense because like you said, so much ha- is happening all at once. There's so many decisions that have to be made in such a short amount of time. So it's not like a typical year of what we've been doing. Right? Yeah. So it, I can understand where they're coming from um, about uncertainty, but but because no one really knows right now. Like you know, we've had two major changes: GM and a coach. So we don't know this yet. Like everything has to continue to just fall into play. And once we allow, once that all happens, then that kind of give you a clear direction of what we are, what the objective is. And like you said, everyone knows that the objective, the main objective, is to win the championship. Certainly, and we heard your new GM say this is a win-now team, which is, I know, music to the ears of any player. You mentioned that Coach Silas says that things are going to change for next season in a good way. What are your expectations? What is going to change for the Rockets next season? What does he talk to you about? Uh, Just the way we play. um, You know, some some ways of, you know, guarding, um, you know, having small ball at times, you know, but having a dynamic big man and everything. and, you know, just incorporating to bring out the best of both of our superstars and, and, and put ourselves in a position to where we can bring out the best of both of them. And he said that he's up for that challenge and he wants to, you know, them to get back to MVP status for both of them because they both can do it. They both can do it. And, you know, James has done it for significant years and Russ has done unbelievable for the past three, four years. And, you know, he wants them guys to get back to that same caliber because that will take us over the hump. And, you know, we're going to follow right behind them, guys. We're going, they're our leaders. They're the ones that, you know, leading by example. And like I said, if, they're click, if we're clicking on all cylinders, man, we've already, we've already showcased what this team can do. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.